I wanted to talk in this video about science and, and objectivism, and uh, there's actually another URL I got a call up and I forgot. So, uh, but I put up on screen my father's book called Science, Myth or Magic, and he wrote it towards the end of his life. And uh, he was aimed to, un for he, he was a biological scientist, and he, the aim was to for explain to people what science is about as we tend, and the, now it's kind of, now it's been almost, no, it's 2000, so exactly 20 years ago he wrote it. And now, like with discussions about bad science and, and, and false, you know, stuff, uh, fake news and things online, it's, we're more aware of it because we have the internet is far more prevalent than it was 20 years ago. But this is what he wrote in much the way you have uh, people responding to the fact that there's, there's false information out there. And the problem we have... Uh, uh, nowadays, and it's been a problem forever, is that news services are geared towards simple narratives, and simple narratives are not the reality. Uh, Oversimplistic thinking and simple narratives just don't paint a real picture of what's going on. For example, you can say, you talk about coronavirus has come up, and I'll read the chat in just a minute. The you know we you could have a narrative. Okay, X percent of people have died. But that doesn't break down the percentage of people that have died. So once you break down the percentages, you start seeing age groups. Well, people who are more elderly are more susceptible to dying. Uh, and then when you start breaking down those things in more detail, you find out that people who, are, who had uh, previous illnesses are more susceptible. And when you start breaking down data, you start to find really interesting things. And you realize that the simplistic things like a percentage or something don't give a full picture. And so this is what this was about. Actually, he, because it's on biological science and the stuff I talk about is, is uh, audio science, I suppose, um, it's a little, bit, a little bit different to... Uh, I mean, I, I suggest reading it. I mean, of course, I benefit from you if you do go and buy a copy and read it. I mean, I probably they, the uh, not as much as if you not as much as if I, you you click on an Amazon link and buy something. But I get some fraction of a percent, and I earn about maybe once in a while. I get uh, like a few dollars. So I mean, the the amount that authors or people who are in who are who have you know even though I'm being the author's son get from when these books are sold is almost nothing. But I'm thankful that it was put into uh, Kindle edition, so you can read it. So okay, um, okay. Here's here's the story. I was read the the intro, part of chapter one, which I just want to read this before I get talking to audio and other stuff. So, once upon a time, an English medical man, William Withering, fell in love. This is not a love story with a woman who liked painting pictures of wild flowers. Now, this is, what's the, that, so he took up botany. Now, botany, of course, the study of, of, um, uh, of things like uh, flowers and plants and what have you. Then he learned of an old countrywoman in Shropshire who had a secret cure for dropsy containing more than 20 herbs. Now, famous philosopher Bertrand Russell has written about such folklore. Now, so, you know, back before we had science, people would say, oh, if you take these herbs, it'll cure you. Um, and I'll just skip the, uh, a quote from him. But the old woman's remedy was an example of magical practices and primitive superstition, the opposite of science. Or was it? Dropsy is an old word for oedema, which can be a sign of one kind of heart disease, congestive cardiac failure. Well, now we're getting into what modern science. Among the magical herbs was foxglove. And in 1775, from his findings in folklore, Dr. Withering was able to add foxglove to the pharmacopoeia. Later, a 19th century poet, Sarah Hoare, Hoare, I don't know how to pronounce the name, Hoare, in verses of, on the pleasures of botany, wrote appropriate lines, and this is a poetry, and digitalis wisely given, another proof of favouring heaven, will happily display the rapid pulse it can abate, the hectic flush it can moderate, and blessed by him whose will is fate, may give a happier day. Now, the original observation in itself was an acceptable sense scientific. It was rational and derived from experience. It may have been gradually developed, and this is an important line here, derived from experience. And I'll get to my point. You can, you can guess what it is if you've been around the forums a lot. It may have been gradually developed by lengthy trial and error before success. Digitalis can be paralleled by many other ethnic drugs, such as cocaine, uh, Curare, I don't know how to pronounce it, curare, for muscle relaxation, and quinine for the treatment of malaria. Today, more such drugs are being searched for and found. So, correspondingly, the disrespect shown by Euro disrespect, and this is another one, shown by Europeans towards tribal people is being corrected. 
So the point about this, and how does this relate to audio? Well, this is the point of medicines being found that folklore said if you took these medicines, you it would cure you of this particular illness. And sometimes it worked with trial and error. This is how these things came about. So in audio, we have these two camps, which are objective and subjective. Uh, the, and like the rest of the internet, you probably may have seen that meme. The majority of people are kind of in the middle of the road, but the very extreme people, if you do your grade curve and you put the extreme people, the people are very passionately, uh, you'll get uh, in any kind of argument, debate, idea or concept, religion, philosophy, politics, you'll get people who are on the far extremes and they're often the people who make the most noise. And we call these in audio, of course, extreme subjectivists and extreme objectivists. So I'm getting to my, I'll get to my point in a second, which is that... Um, you know, people who we, we, we listen to gear and equipment and we make observations. And then there are people who obsessively focus on how stuff measures and say that, you know, subjective impressions are, are, are no good. Uh, because, you know, if it measures, if, if we went all by measurements, we'd actually, you know, ha have better guidance. The thing, of course, we learned recently from Shit Audio's discussion of blind listening is that that even stuff that is a hundred times has a hundred times worse distortion when I think it was comparing the Valley 2 amp with the Magni 3 plus or Magni 3 heresy was that even something with a hundred times as much distortion that distortion is not so noticeable you can actually almost not no hear it and it's the same thing when I had IFI's Pro IDSD in here in non oversampling mode its distortion is vastly worse than if it's in one of the amp better oversampling modes. But the difference was actually pretty small. And that's even with good headphones plugged in directly. So you can notice it, but it's not as dramatic as it looks like on graphs. And the reason for that is because, mainly because of the way measurements are taken, which is to put a tone through something and then see the difference, how, much, how, much, uh, how many sidebands of noise come up or where the noise floor is or put something through like white noise through a DAC, which even going up to 20 kilohertz is going to cause a lot of, a non-oversampling DAC is going to cause aliasing in high, fre high frequency aliasing, which doesn't usually occur so much in music when you're playing it back through any DAC. And so what we see on graphs and, and measurements is just not really representative of what we get when we hear. And so there was a recently uh, audio file style, previously computer audio file. They made just like Headfire, sound a kind of sound science forum, and they told the folk it said the objectivists should stay, you know, do their stuff in there, and they got all pissed off and left, <clears throat> or about four or five of them did anyway, and they were the people who'd come into into threads and and thread crap them basically, saying you know or, you know thread crap subjective impressions, and that drives a lot of people off, just like people who come in and with their extreme conspiracies or extreme you know political religious whatever bias drive us off discussing these things and I've had that because I had a a uh, someone who I won't even just explain their relationship to me will when I mentioned a particular famous person online just went absolutely crazy at me and and attacked me and and started even though they're a scientist started drawing up pulling up articles which were the most unevidence based most biased ridiculous you know the worst of the worst nonsense and i'd observe people that who can be very sensible and rational when they get triggered on their particular pet you know their pet belief they just go completely off the wall no matter how rational a person they are normally so but that's what i wanted to talk about in that this observation it's it's i've noticed these people who are very extreme objectivists they tend to use what they uh, they may have no scientific background. They may have nothing to. Be they may have never designed audio gear in their life. They may have never. They may even have only rudimentary idea of the science. But they're so focused on their objectivism, and when their response, they seem to use their suppose use what we call what we call science or the the results of tests to attack people, not to say this is not a good idea, but to actually go out and attack people. And this has been the main problem is, you know, a pure science is not about going, hey, look, this is wrong, you're a bad person. It's about going, I've observed this thing, you know, is there a way I can tell if what I mean, if there's something that needs to be investigated, just like the story in this book, where someone, you know, they know there was a folklore tale about a particular plant uh, treating a particular illness. And then investigating that, they found, oh, yes, there actually, this there was some validity here. So the point, and this, you'll see this in my videos, is about 
you know, I get people trolls coming onto the channel, uh, you know, into the comments all the time, going, "Or oh, did you do a blind test?" Or no, blind test is science. So your 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 point is invalid. Your subjective impressions are invalid. It's like no, they're not invalid. The correct real science is about going. Well, I've observed something. Like for example, I'm going to talk about if I get round to doing my shit Yggdrasil video. I observed uh, a particular characteristic of the sound of the Yggdrasil analog too. And then I went and looked at the measurements and I found what something that matched that. And I could say, this is the only, this is probably the cause of my particular observation. And I'll, sh I'll show you that because there's a particular measurement which is almost completely ignored. Everyone just focuses on harmonic distortion, THD and, and, and all that. And there's one particular measurement which I'm gonna talk about in which I get around to doing that video, which is more relevant to how we perceive uh, how particular uh, audio gear sounds. And when I saw that, I go, bingo. And I actually emailed Jason and said, is this uh, artifact, you know, what is this artifact? And he said, oh, a particular artifact due to the particular aspect of the circuit. And I had observed something and it matched up with the measurement. I was like, bingo, this is how things work. Or if I do have, you know, you hear a particular, you know, you, you, you hear a particular kind of like harshness in headphones. Maybe you can measure the headphones and see if there's a resonance at a particular frequency that makes them sound harsh. This is where how science works. It isn't like, oh, we've taken measurements, you're wrong. That just doesn't work at all. You have to correlate measurements to have, it has to be relevant to, you know, what you're doing. If you just take a, a, a standard harmonic distortion measurement, you have a one kilohertz tone at minus zero dB, like full power. And then you see a sideband down, you know, sidebands down at 90 decib, minus 90 dBs. Those are, mean nothing. Absolutely close to nothing. I mean, you can see how much distortion the circuit has, but unless all your music is at zero dB, you're not going to hear anything 90 decibels down. So if you most of, let's say your musical peaks are somewhere like minus 10, 20 dB, minus 90 dB down is going to be like beyond, you're not going to hear it among in the background of the, of the music. And that assumes that those particular side bands come up with the other, you know, in, the, in amongst all the, all the bands in the music. Probably the closest measurement might be the multi-tone measurement where it just fires a whole lot of tones simultaneously you can see the distortion in between that might be interesting to compare like the uh, multi-tone measurements from a bunch of amplifiers out of curiosity but most you know a measurement has to relate to something you're going to actually hear so if you have like a very steep roll off in a deck down to the treble you know up in the uh above 10 kilohertz and then you have a flat you know linear phase Thing. You might hear a tiny bit of a difference like in the very high frequencies depending how good your hearing is and if the music has anything up there. But the basic thing is science is not about going, we measured this and this is measurements, the, the, you know, the god of, of, of truth. It's a, science is about observing stuff and then taking those observations, making, hypoth making a hypothesis about the reason for them and testing that. And then if you're wrong, just keep testing and testing and testing until you learn more about what's going on. So you get more pieces of the puzzle that you can fill in and understand what's going on uh, about a particular aspect of science or about the aspect of the world around you. And, and that's how science works. So I just want to talk about that a bit before I start even reading the chat. The chat. But um, this is a really important topic and I should do a video on it. Maybe I'll, just, I'll probably just cut this video into one about science. But I have a, uh, it's, it's one that keeps coming up and I just advise staying away from and not engaging people who uh, come in and, you know, attack people for not having an objectivist mindset or any kind of mindset, actually. I mean, people like you're very subjectivist who reject any kind of uh, science and measurements. Maybe just don't feed, just don't feed them. And it's the same online, the most noisy extreme people, the most extreme people tend to be the most noisy as well and, and drown everyone else out. And people are starting to come around to this fact and that um, unfortunately some, you know, some politics has been based on extreme, you know, been guided by extremism. Uh, the assumption being that, you know, the noisy extremists actually represent a majority of some kind when they don't. So um, that's just my kind of rant on this kind of thing. But again, I just want to send, emphasize very importantly, science is about observing something, making a hypothesis for the reason, it, the, the, the reason for it, being that the observation, testing it, and then rinse and repeat, basically. That's what science is. It's not about doing a test and then attacking people, okay? 